Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. As I always say, good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are around the world. Thank you for joining uh, myself, Sean Last, uh, on the Tradio webinar. It's always good to have a lot of you from uh, from all over. It's really, really exciting for us. So I always start by thanking you for taking the time to join us. Uh, we've got the social platform, the social network. We're trying to be the best out there, and we believe we are. We, we're growing with all you listening on the line and all you taking part in what we believe is sort of a revolution in the, in the way we trade, in the way we trade foreign exchange, in the way we trade commodities, currencies, you name it. Um, for those of you who haven't joined us before, welcome. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard or, or met myself or spoken to you before, I, like I said, Sean Last, um, joined uh, about six months ago to Tradio, major experience in uh, Barclays Bank around the world, UK, London and Singapore as well as spending some time with the hedge fund and, and family office. And again, just um, I joined the Tradio project because I'm uh, having worked in so many large institutions, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, in what we're doing here and in what we are trying to achieve. And with you on the line and you listening and you partaking, we are we're getting there each day, um, step by step. We are, we, are, we are creating, and you see by reading the news, the, the banks, the institutions, they are trying to keep up, so to speak, with how the way of finance, the way of banking, the way of trading is going. But anyway, enough about that. Well, today, as you can see, moving averages. You know, some of you out there might not be so comfortable with technical analysis. Some will be more so. Um, some of you may have come across moving averages for some not. But, uh, you know, technical analysis has been around for a very long time. And uh, there's no doubt that hundreds, if not thousands, of indicators have been created, have been used, have been proven, have been uh, proven to be incorrect, whatever. But there's no doubt <coughs> that moving average is perhaps, uh, you know, more popular than the rest, been around longer than the rest, um, and is perhaps more reliable. You know, that's for you to, to, to figure out yourselves. Um, but perhaps it's more reliable and objective uh, and effective than, than other technical kids. So we thought we'd put on a, a webinar today on moving averages. Um, I will discuss what's going on in the markets and what we're expecting uh, later today, for those of you who aren't aware, from the United States um, with you shortly. Uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it's a very busy day. Let's let's not be around the bush. It's a very been a very busy few weeks. It's been an amazing few weeks to be investing in the market to be watching what's going on. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave you with my thoughts on that later. But uh, let's cover moving averages, okay? They come in various forms, um, but effectively it comes down to one thing. It's trying, <coughs> excuse me. It's trying to smooth out uh, and average out. Uh, the day-to-day -day price or whatever time frame you look at, but the, the fluctuations of, because uh, we know the volatility, it's trying to smoothen that journey out for you. We use it to try and identify trends, <clears throat> long-term, short-term, we'll see that soon. Um, we use them to put on stop losses. We use them to put on take profits. You know, we use them as signals. All this I'm going to show you very, very shortly. Uh, but that's why they're so powerful, because they can be used for a wide array of things. Um, and I hope today to leave you with a bit more understanding and a bit more, um, you know, belief in them and, and using them going forward. Okay. Um, and like I said, they have been around for a very long time. They are, I believe, one of the most popular technical indicators. Um, if you disagree, you know, use the questions. Um, bear with me. I'm just um, getting some questions in. If anyone can't hear me, um, please uh, stick out a question on there and I can see it. But you should be able to hear and see. So um, hopefully you can all, can all do that. But yeah, like I'm saying, moving averages, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, are, can be used over a very, very different time periods, and that's what people do. I'm going to use the, the Metaphor platform, but I'm also going to show you on our social web trader because I want you to all, uh, I want you to all um, be okay with um, with uh, with both platforms, obviously. Now, let me just bear with me, guys, for one moment whilst I check uh, some visuals. Um, Hold on, bear with me, peep. People, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, it seems to be working fine. Um, on the website. 
Okay. It all seems to be working fine, so um, I'm going to carry on. For those of you who have problems on the website, if you log on to our YouTube channel, youtube.com, type in Tradio Social, you'll see the uh, the live uh, video on YouTube there. Okay? Uh, crystal clear HD quality uh, as well. Anyway, as I was saying, <coughs> there's what I'm, I'm not going to go into every detail. You know, I don't want to, to go too far too quickly. Uh, these are things you can cover with myself or with your account manager on a one to one basis. I'm going to focus on, on the simple moving average today, but there's two things I want to work the simple moving average and the exponential moving average. As the simple moving average, uh, you know, sort of as it says on the tin, it's very, very straightforward. It's calculated by taking, taking the, uh, the, the, the closing prices. So let's have a look. Uh, let's see in an action. We've got a one day chart on the euro US dollar. Um, let's uh, zoom in a bit. It's taken by taking, you know, the, 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 the prices of the closing. So moving averages. I'm going to set the period 14. We're going to come back to that soon. Simple method here. Apply to close. That's the box stat. And that's what we're going to stay with. Okay. Now you can see it's added this line in the middle. That's 14 day. Um, and that's basically what we'd call a short term moving average. You know, 14 day. It's taken by, it's taken the, from this point, it's taken the 14 previous days closes, added them up and simply divided by 14. A simple mean. Okay. To try and try and like we said at the beginning. Skip out that noise, as we call it in finance, the fluctuation, trying to smoothen that price out for you. Okay? Now we're going to add a couple more. Now that's a simple moving average. The exponential moving average gives more weight to the most recent prices. Why does it do that? Because, and, and, and there are flaws with the technical analysis, which we'll cover soon, but people came along and said, you surely need to give more weight to the most to the more recent prices because they are they are they should be weighted more because they're, they're having more effect. So people came along and they created the exponential moving average. Um, if we add the moving average now, an exponential one on the same time period, let's see the difference. I'm going to change the color to a nice bright yellow, and you can see. Okay, look at the yellow and the red. Same time period, both a moving average, but exponential. The exponential, the yellow, is giving more weight to the previous prices. So here on a 14 day, you can see why is there this spike here? Because here, these prices here, you can see it's been a volatile few days and that has meant the simple moving average has fluctuated slightly more. Okay, and that's the difference. We're gonna focus um, on, um, on the simple. Now I've got a question, where can I see it on YouTube? If you log on to YouTube, Lars, in your search and, and in the search type Tradio Social, Click on the Tradio Social channel and you will see uh, a live video. You'll see the title. You should be able to log on. Let me know. Um, let me know if that goes okay. We do have a lot of people on the line, thankfully. So hopefully everyone's able to get on. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the, the, the exponential. Uh, delete. Just leave it with the simple. But that's that's really why I'm going to focus on the simple. But that's exactly what's happened. Uh, and I believe it's, it's valid. You know, sometimes we need to give more weight to recent prices. Um, and that's and that's why the exponential came. And why is it called a moving average? You know, since it's taking just the previous 14 days, because every day it gets updated, obviously. It's moving in the sense that when new data becomes available, the older data point drops out, and the new data point comes into replace. Okay? Um, so that's the simple moving average on a shorter time period, okay? Um, we're going to now add... A medium term, perhaps a long term. So we're going to go back to the moving average. I'm going to add now period 50, you know, even 100. I'm going to add that yellow. I'm going to change it back to simple. For those of you, and remember, the, the longer the time period, this is a basics of uh, technical analysis, the longer a time period, the less sensitive, the less sensitive. Uh, the data is. Think about it. You know, over a hundred or two hundred day period, each time the the data updates, it should be moving slightly less, shouldn't it? Because it's not as you know as a fourteen day period. It's obviously going to be a more uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It's obviously going to have more of an effect. Now we're going to add one more because we're going to start to understand how we can use these in our trading strategies. So I'm going to go back to moving average. I'm now going to two hundred, which is widely seen to be a long term. You know, depending on your style of trading, obviously everyone's different. 
Um, you need to have all options available. Let's choose a nice uh, yellow, we've got a red. It's going to uh, look like blue. Okay. <clears throat> so now, firstly, the trend, okay? Uh, from the simple point of view, identifying the trend is probably is one of the key functions and one of the reason why we're using average. But in trading, to be profitable, also identifying the trend and hopefully identifying where the trend is coming to an end is what's going to make you a profitable trader. Um, you know, do you make the trend your friend? Is the trend your friend, or are you a trader who looks to actually find when the trend is breaking? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Now. If we look, uh, let's look at this, the the fourteen day. You know, I'm even going to change it to a fifty day. Maybe fourteen days is a bit too short. You know, no, we'll keep it. It's believed that when the price is above above the short term moving average, it's a bullish momentum. I.e., the price should keep rising. Okay. So if we have a look, um, if we have a look here, you know, if you would have, if the price would have crossed here and you would have bought, do okay. Same goes here. You buy just when that price comes back up, and look what's happening. You have a nice rise, but you're right. Uh, it's come back down. So you also need to know potentially when to uh, when to exit the trade as well. If we look at where the price is now, um, on a very short term basis, it's just creeping up above above the moving average. So what does that mean? Uh, potentially, people would be using that to, to to buy, but I believe with the data, with the information coming out tonight, people are more uh, waiting. We'll talk about that soon. Now, um, what about? So we've talked about the trend. What about um, you know crossovers, as we call them? Now, when this is over a moving average, it's usually seen as a signal. Um, so the most basic type of crossover is when the price. So here your US dollar shifts from one side of the, the indicator to the other. Okay, so you can see we're actually still nowhere near the 100 day moving average or the 200 day longer term trend. Still a long, long way to go. But on a shorter day, shorter time, it's just crossed over. Now, do you take that as an indicator to go long on the euro? Um, and on the flip side, when, the, when the, the price comes tumbling below, do you use it as a signal to, um, to sell? Okay, uh, let me just check if there's any questions. Uh, uh, none yet. Okay, good. Everyone seems to be seeing everything okay. So that's the simple crossover. What about crossovers when the actual different moving averages we're looking at crossover? And that's a bit more interesting. You can see we've got the red, yellow, and blue. The red is 14 day, very short term. Yellow, what I like to call medium term, 100 days, and blue, 200. You can see the blue crossed over the yellow. So the 200 day crossed over the. Um, the yellow around October. Since then, it stayed above. Now, s traders use these as signals to, to try and identify that the momentum is fundamentally shifting in the clear direction. Um, and a buy signal tends to be generated when the short term average, that's the red, crosses above the long term, above the long term average. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, look at this here. Beautiful, great example. Uh, look at you're following here. You've got the 14 day and the 100 day. Now, when that crossover comes, people will really see that as a strong shift and the euro creeping up. And that's exactly what it did for around a month, a bit less. That's above the 100 day. Uh, that's above the 100 day. Um, and now, when it's fallen back down below the longer term trend, boom, look at that big fall. Big, big drop since. If you would have continued to sell either then or get out, you would be a happy man getting out there. At 111, that's for sure. Uh, so you can see they can be quite powerful because they're so commonly used, but they've been around so long, there's got to be something to them almost. That's what I believe. They're objective and they're often are not reliable, more reliable than, um, than, than often other indicators. Okay? So what I want you to identify is some crossovers. Let's have a look at... Uh, Let's have a look at USD, Japanese Yen. Wow. Okay, I'm going to move it to a one-day chart, and you can see, wow. Uh, let's zoom in a bit just to give you a bit more color. Uh, so then remember, the red is the short term. Crossed over here on the 14th, 15th of October, and look at that. Had you bought there when it crossed over the 200-day, when it crossed over the 100, sorry, and you followed it up, wow. 
that's uh, that's almost ten percent rise in, in the dollar against the yen since then. Um, and also when the red crossed over the blue, the, the, the two hundred day, even the longer term, you still continue. And now the short term trend is so far above the longer term trends that it's still quite a bullish signal on the U.S. dollar. Okay. Um, so again, it's uh, it can be. Let's have a look at Euro GVP as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Cold weather's taken its uh, taken its toll on the. Uh, on, on all of us, I'm afraid. But yes, Euro Yen, Euro Yen, Euro GVP. Uh, look at this. The reds come back down as soon as that. Now, obviously, ideally, you would have liked to have sold there. That's not always going to happen, people. You know, you can't get every trade spot on. However, you'd still be feeling okay if you would have got out there because it's still followed the trend very much along. And if you look at the price now, it's very, very in the middle between the 200 and 100 day moving average. Um. And the price right now, like we said earlier, on a shorter term, is still below the short-term moving average. So, to me, it still looks like the euro is pretty weak against the British pound. Um, for those of you who have swings before, you know my views on Europe and on the UK. Uh, I could talk for a very long time. Excuse me. I could talk for a very long time um, about that, uh, but I'll try not to to get sidetracked. But that's just a couple. You know, look, there's a lot more, uh, you know, envelopes, triple trends, triple crossovers, all these things. I'm not going to go into them now. If you want to really drill into to moving averages, we can do that. Um, one other thing I want to show you, there's a Bollinger Band. It's a derivative of the moving averages. Again, and I'm going to show you this on the platform, just again, for those of you who are more using the platform. I'm going to go back on Euro US dollar. For those of you who aren't aware, um, remember, here's your trend indicator. So like I said, simple moving average. Triangular moving average, so that's weighted moving average. We haven't discussed all those. We don't have time, and I'm conscious I don't want to take up too much of your time. But remember what we said. You change the period here, color, and it's as it. Now let's add a Bollinger Band, okay? Uh, let me just remove that first. Um, add the Bollinger Band. So I'm going to find the minor thing here. I'm sure a lot of you are comfortable with the Bollinger Band, but it is uh, a feature. I'm going to add a chart. You can see it's added the... Uh, two lines okay bear with me it's added the two lines and it's added this moving average in the middle now what the what the moving what the Bollinger Band is trying to, 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 to tell us basically um, it creates these outer bounds and it's basically trying to give you signals so when the price hits this upper band it's potentially a signal that a reversal is coming and to sell and vice versa when the price hits that bottom band Perhaps a signal to buy, and obviously, depending on the type of trade you are and the type of time period you use, you know, when we're looking at one hour, if I change it to thirty minutes, it's going to look wholly different, isn't it? Um, you know, it looks very, very different. One other useful tool, so that's the Bollinger Band, uh, very straightforward to understand. Those outer bands are what you're looking for, and when there's when they're very, very wide like they are now, it's showing volatility is quite high, and sometimes traders wait. Uh, if we go back to one hour chart, let me zoom out a bit. You know, if you compare the width here between the outer and lower band compared to here, it's much narrower here, showing volatility is relatively lower. But some traders are waiting for that uh, for that sort of movement to come, like we see back here sort of on the 12th of December. Okay? So everyone has their own sort of tactics. Um, it's up to you how to, to, to use them. But again, don't be shy to use them and to see how what feels more comfortable for you. I'm going to go back to MT4 because I want to show you one other thing. Some of you might not be. Uh, and it's the MACD, okay? The moving average, convergence, dif divergence. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to add it. He's going to add this thing here. I'll make it a bit bigger for you. And again, it's one. Of, it's a very, very, very popular technical indicator. Uh, and it's monitoring basically the relationship between two moving averages. I'm not going to go into how it's calculated. Uh, it's done by subtracting an exponential moving average from another moving average, etc. What you need to understand is whether there's a negative value, which we see now. Okay, you see this zero here. You see it's currently a minus 0 0.01. So when a ne negative value occurs, it's basically when the short-term average is below the long-term average, i.e., current momentum is in a downward direction. So if we're looking now at Euro GBP. Like we saw, we already we explained earlier why it's below the simple moving average. And look at this. The red is below the 100-day. 
and you don't need to add them. By using the MACD, you've got that right there for you. Uh, so traders are watching very, very closely for when it approaches that zero line, because when it hits above that zero line, that might be an indicator to buy, and the momentum might be turning. So here, look at this momentum here. And if you follow it there, this is what happens. Okay, so that's where you're going to find an MT4. For those of you who still want the more help, always don't be shy to ask me. Here's your, your trend list, your moving averages, uh, the Bollinger Band also we talked about, uh, moving average, standard deviation, there's plenty. MACD I want you to start using in, in your trades. Um, what else? So... Moving average, that's why I obviously very much like them and, and they're so well used. They can be used as a wide array. Signals, trigger lines, stop uh, stop loss we mentioned in the beginning. I want to show you why they can be used as stop loss. Some people will use them as a stop loss. Um, let me get rid of that. So some people, longer term traders, for example, if we go to US dollar CHF, they might use this 200 moving average line as their stop loss, uh, stop loss, yes, as their support line. They believe that if the price comes down here, that's their support. Or well, the yellow for some traders who are more medium term. Okay, so they might uh, they might be watching, so you can use them as support. Resistance line, that which feeds into obviously stop losses and take profits. Remember, those of you who are straying to on a one-to-one -one basis, stop losses and take profits are not just about what, how much money you can afford. What's more important is about using the data, like we've looked at, moving averages, things like that, to, to, to determine a, a level. You know, it might be worth you lowering your stop loss, so you might be risking a few more dollars, but you're giving yourself more chance of staying in a trade that potentially is actually going to rebound quite strongly. Okay? Um, so they're really, really useful for that reason. They can be used as signals, stop losses, uh, buy signals, you know, a whole array of things, okay? Um, let me see what else. Is there anyone, any questions? Now's a chance. Nothing? Let's have a look. Ah, good question. You know, yeah. you said I'm, I'm sounding too uh, positive about these uh, moving averages. There's got to be some, uh, some flaws. And, okay, that's true. There's a few things I would say. You have to pay attention to the data using in, in, in the calculations, obviously. Uh, more importantly is the time period. Again, I told you, you're all, you're, you're all out there on the line are, are, are different types of traders and have different styles. Some of you might not care one iota about a 200-day moving average because you are scalpers and you are in and out, in and out of every trade. Okay, I understand that. Some of you might only be longer-term traders and the crossovers are less important to you. Um, I understand that. Um, and another thing, you know, whilst I'm now uh, bashing moving averages, is obviously, because it's a ten technical indicator, it's a lagging indicator, i.e. the transaction signal is only going to occur after the price has moved enough, you know, it, because it's incorporating the previous day's close and the days were closed before that, you know, it can't be updated until the price is closed. So from that point of view, people say, well, that's no good then because it's not giving me future signal. What I would say to that is, Correct, but once that data is strong enough to give you a nice clear signal, it can really give a clear, clear, clear signal and a clear uh, path of the momentum's go. So you have to do, you do have to be aware of the lag, as we call it, okay, and the fact that it's responsive to to to, to the price only after, basically only after it's closed. So we looked at some moving averages. We talked about simple exponential. You know, the fact that shorter term and longer term, you need to, to, to know that the difference in the period you use will obviously have an effect. The longer the period, uh, look, at, look at this line. Look at the 200-day moving line compared to the, to the red 14-day. That's my point. Very, very smooth compared, obviously, to a 14-day. And the, the middle, the 100-day in between, basically. Um, and it can be a great, great risk management tool. Something I'm always keen to talk about my clients. Great risk management tool uh, for stop losses, take profits, uh, support and resistance lines, um, etc. Okay, but you have to be aware that no indicator is perfect. It's not going to work 100% of the time or even 90% of the time. It's up to you to determine how best to use it. Um, here's a question, Sean. What is the best combination for moving averages? How many simple and how many exponential? And combining them stochastic, MACD, or something else. Good question, Milan. Um, by combination, I presume you mean, you know, 
which time periods. Uh, like I said, the standards are 10, 20, 50, 100, 200. There's no right or wrong. That's the truth. There's no right or wrong. Um, it's up to you to determine, you know, it's also if you're starting off using uh, moving averages, trial and error almost. Use a few uh, different ones. See what suits you best. Not just about what makes you the most money, but what you understand the most, what you feel comfortable with. Okay, and, and regarding exponential moving average, I'm just going to bring it up again. Let's get rid. Let's just keep the long term um, and add an exponential moving average as well. Remember, we said exponential, putting more weight on recent prices. Now, obviously, on a 200-day, it's still going to be relatively smooth. Uh, but let's make that all yellow and let's see. Okay, you can see. You can see, as the price has been climbing, climbing heavily since uh, the 8th of November, the exponential moving average, which is placing more weight on these on these closing prices, is, is, is higher, isn't it? Uh, that's the very reason. And again, I don't believe it's right or wrong. I believe it's up to you as a trader and your strategy to determine which one's best. There are some people who have been trading for 20 years who will argue with you all day and night why either technical analysis is no good, why either simple moving average is no good, why it should be exponential, why it should be simple, etc. You know, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but it's up to you to uh, to work out what's best. And if you want to figure that out on a one-to-one -one basis, Milan, I'm not sure your account manager is. You can either get in touch with me directly. Uh, I'll be happy to talk with you or speak to your account manager. It's up to you. And for those of you new on the line, uh, the same goes for you. Okay. Um, so... I wanted to talk about the markets before we finish off. That's the moving average. I hope it's been uh, insightful. I really, um, again, I'm glad I did this webinar because it's just given me another almost refresh to, 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 to how simple they are, yet how uh, effective they actually can be. Uh, that's the truth, people. Uh, and, of course, you have to caveat with the fact that nothing's perfect. Uh, but I think as technical analysis go, they're good to understand. They can be used in a lot of different instances, and they can be very, very, very helpful in terms of risk management. Um, and people who incorporate good risk management strategies into their portfolio time and time again will be the more successful traders. I've seen it with my own two eyes over a number of years. Please believe me on that. Um, so bear that in mind. And um, yes, now tonight, for those of you who are trading, aren't trading, those of you sitting on the sidelines because it's too volatile, doesn't matter. Be aware tonight. First time in 12 months we're expected to raise the interest rates in the United States from a whopping 0.5 to 0.75. I know, I know. Enough to get us all uh, hot under the collar. A massive raise right of 0.25%. Nonetheless, in terms of market, that's seen as a positive step. Now, 90 to 95% of market analysts, participants expect there to be a rate rise. So you should say, let's look at euro dollar. Uh, I'll answer your question, Pen Panagiotos, in a, in a minute. Um, you should say it should be priced into the market, but if there's anything we've learned in the last few weeks, um, it's uh, that things are there to take us by surprise. You know, although 95% <laughs> believe the rate rise, it would be quite almost comical if Janet Yellen doesn't raise rates. But what's more important is the press conference, which happens after, okay? So, so the UK time, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., that's 2 p.m. In, in the US, uh, 9 p.m. in South Africa, uh, wherever you are around the world, figure it out. But nine, 7 p.m. in the UK, we get the decision, okay? Rates are now X or Y. But half an hour after Janet Yellen comes out and gives a press conference. Now, what she's going to do is give an indication, use, use language that, Every word she says counts, but what she's going to do is talk about particularly 2017 and what she expects. Now, don't forget that this time a year ago when they raised rates for the first time after the recession, she actually said that she expects rates to continue to rise every quarter, i.e. four times in 2016. How many times did rates rise in 2016? Zero. Only hopefully one in a few minutes from now, in a few hours. So that's not to mean it's going to happen, but if she's positive about continued steady rate rises. And if she is, uh, you know, confident about the US economy, she says there's enough going in the employment market to, to, to give us confidence, then I really think the euro uh, could fall off a cliff and, and the dollar could, uh, could really, really go far. You know, it's still got some way to go compared to where it was. Uh, but I think, you know, 103 is possible for sure. However, if she's negative, and, 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 and I don't think it's a secret that Trump is no fan of the central bank at the moment, 
so she's not going to mention him by name or anything like that, but she could use it against him. The fact that there's so much uncertainty with, with his policy, with poli with financial, she obviously won't mention his name, but financial policy, economic policy in 2017, it could weaken the dollar. So for those of you who are trading, you need to be on top of it. So I advise you to be watching, to be, uh, and of course you stop losses, but bear in mind there's going to be a lot of volatility. So the spikes will be quite large. So one, you might get stopped out too early and two, slippage will occur, which means uh, it's not always because of the liquidity, the exact price doesn't get met. But it will be, you know, and, and look at what's happened, um, you know, if we look what happened after the election, November the 8th, where are we? What happened was the, expect, the expected Trump got in, dollar sold off. The uh, dollar sold off. Uh, but actually throughout the day, it continued to strengthen, 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 and look at this, it's gone very, very strong. So I think we could see a similar a similar pattern. Initial sell-off or initial buys, a, yo a lot of yo-yoing, then as she speaks in the press conference, then we'll get a real idea of which way the things are going. Um, so please be on top of that. that that's all I'm going to talk about today, because that is what's on my mind, on my client's mind, on everyone's mind, and it should be on yours mind. Um, so focus on the dollar. For those of you who trade gold, you know, gold, dollar, obviously, the, the negative correlation there, be aware of that. Um, anything dollar-related, emerging market currencies, everyone should be affected tonight, okay? She's got a lot of weight on her shoulders, Janet Yellen, that's for sure. Um, so I wish her luck with that. Let's see if there's any last questions. Yes, there is a last question. Going back to um, moving averages, do are you, I was looking at daily charts. Do they work as well in shorter time frames? This is a good question. I think... Um, the shorter the time frame you look at on the chart, obviously, the more sensitive the data is. What we're trying to do is, obviously, moving averages in themselves are trying to cancel out sort of the noise around that because they're, they're, they're averaging out fluctuation. And the same way with that, um, it does depend on your, on, your, on your time frame. So I would say that if you're using a 30-minute chart in general, it, to me, it indicates that you're a short-term trader. So to me, you're, you're likely using a short-term moving average as well, uh, like a 14-day, a 50-day max. Um, so they can be used on shorter time frames. Um, it just depends on your style. You know, uh, I know I've said it a lot before today, but there aren't any real right or wrongs. Um, but it's up to you to really hone your skills, hone your expertise. Be in touch. Thank you all for joining. I will leave you with my details. Sean, S-E-A-N at Tradio.com. For those of you who are new, please get in touch with me directly and I'll be happy to work with you. For those of you who are new, be in touch with myself, with your account managers. Again, we have, um, please all join our, our YouTube trade, comment, like, comment on the platform, um, don't be shy, I know sometimes it can be uh, sort of intimidating, but you know, we have the social feed here for a reason, but your comments, your thoughts, your, uh, your broadcast, your signals on the YouTube trade, comment, like, join, Facebook, you name it, we want you out there, we want uh, our traders to be at the very forefront of the financial markets. Um, and get in touch with me. It's December. I'm feeling festive. Uh, we've got special promotions on at the moment, uh, not just for new clients, but for existing clients. Ask your account manager about that. We do have the VIP level service. We have the platinum. We have uh, bonuses on offer, uh, especially at this time of volatile time. Having more equity can help uh, and reduction in the spread. So don't be shy. And I'd be you know, happy to hear your feedback. So even if you have your own account manager, you can feel free to email me directly. Uh, Sean, S-E-A-N at Trader.com, your views, your comments, your thoughts, and uh, thanks for your time, everyone. Enjoy tonight, wherever you are around the world, enjoy it. It's a great event. It's what we're here to do. Even if you're not trading, use it as part of the learning, and uh, we'll speak to you next time, and uh, have a good day. Take care.